confirm and go live hello everyone and welcome back to another episode from the worst D, D channel this is our glacier ridge campaign um i apologize but there are going to be no face cams tonight due to unforeseen circumstances um sickness camera issues um but yeah it's fine we'll just we'll just go through the game and we'll picture ourselves in our minds so this is our monster of the week campaign yes it says dungeon and dragons on twitch but they don't have monster of the week or even ttrpg on twitch so you're stuck with dungeons and dragons <coughs> this is our uh game from michael sands he made this game so that it was similar to a lot of the Monster of the Week series that you see on TV, uh, such as Supernatural, X-Files, Fringe, um, Doctor Who, Scooby-Doo, um, Dresden Files, um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, those type of shows where they fight a different monster every week. Um, so that's basically what this is. And now into the recap. So, last week was actually a shorter game. Um, I think it's mainly because we started at like 10. Um, but, the start of the game was the party talking with Jason. Who ended up being the previous Polar Shadow Stalker. Uh, they had a conversation with him for about half an hour. Uh, or 20 minutes trying to figure things out. Um, he gave them a bit of advice, a bit of clues, things like that. And then they decided to talk amongst themselves while Jason stood there in the hallway. And he's like, are you done with me? And they're like, oh yeah, sorry, we forgot you were there. And he walked away. Uh, so then they spent some time trying to plan out what they were going to do next. Um, so the plan ended up being that they were going to go back to the lodge, kind of go over some stuff. Um, Frankie decided to go and talk to Wyatt, um, telling him exactly what went down. Uh, turned out the entire time that they were talking to Wyatt, um, Emily was hiding in the closet, and they just decided to head to the roof, uh, to keep an eye on the people in hopes that that would help. Uh, then the party headed off to, uh, Wilderness Outfitters to get themselves some stuff to destroy the altar was their plan um so once they that were, did not go well once they were destroying the altar uh they decided they needed sledgehammers they needed a pickaxe um and a couple of other things um after they got their supplies from wilderness outfitters they decided to head to the hunting lodge where they were going to rent a side by side so they could head out to the uh clearing in the woods so once they drove out to the woods they started walking through the forest again they started getting the fog and the whispers and then they got to the clearing where elias's cabin was uh once they got to the cabin they started heading towards the wood pile and frankie was the one in the lead and saw translucent feet around the corner of the wood pile. Uh, so they had to make a hard choice. Either let uh, Maxine and Victor make a noise uh, because she didn't warn or they didn't warn them that um, there was a monster here, or make a noise herself themselves sorry it's still a struggle for me um themselves and get the monster's attention on them um they decided that the needs of the few were better than the needs of the many and to let victor and maxine make the noise uh so victor adjusted his pack that had the pickaxes and the sledgehammer on on it in it uh which made a loud noise and then suddenly the monster popped up and ran around the cabin and charged directly at Victor and Maxine. Um, Victor tried guarding 
uh, Maxine and try and keep the monster's attention, which then caused the monster to attack uh, Victor. Um, for a while, they had a little bit of a battle, um, and Frankie decided they were going to try and break the altar with a sledgehammer. When they tried to smash it with a sledgehammer, there was a loud explosion noise, um, a small loud explosion noise, and the sledgehammer, uh, they kept grip on the sledgehammer, but it blasted into the air. Um, they kept on trying to do this for a bit while Victor and Maxine were fighting off the monster. The monster then charged towards Frankie, seeing what Frankie was doing. And they hit the monster with a sledgehammer. Uh, that was it for the monster, and the monster ran off into the woods. Then they spent some time, about 20 minutes, <laughs> trying to figure out different ways to break the altar. Uh, first they tried another sledgehammer a couple more times. Then they tried a pickaxe. Both Frankie and Victor dislocated their shoulder in the process. Then they set the wood pile on fire in order to try and melt the altar, maybe. Uh, what they didn't do is move that away from uh, Elias's cabin. So the cabin also burnt to the ground. <laughs> um, then after they did that, they tried breaking the altar again. Still same reaction. Um, so they kind of gave up. And just as they were giving up, they heard a woman's voice in the woods. Um, the woman was saying, where are you? I can hear you, but I can't see you. Please help me. I don't know where I am. The woman comes out of the woods. Uh, it is a seven to eight foot tall, translucent woman with red eyes. Uh, completely naked. Has no idea where she is. Uh, but it's Rachel. Um, and then... Rachel has the sudden realization that none of this was a dream and it was all real. And that's where we left off. I'm getting better at these intros and recaps. That was only seven minutes. Yet last time it was nine and a half minutes. So, I mean, pretty good. Shorter game. It was, yeah, that is that is an issue. The, the, the one when we had the really long game, it was like a 15, 16 minute intro and recap. So, you are standing in the middle of the clearing. Wyatt, we will keep in the fact that you are at the cabin or at the lodge still, just because you were at the game. But yeah. Charlie, we will have... What? That's fine, that makes sense. Okay. But Charlie, we will say that you came with them on this expedition. Charlie, uh, if you want to run and get a blanket for Rachel, we'll get some covering on her. Oh, huh. there's not going to be a blanket because the cabin's burned down. <laughs> Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> Don't we have, we have thermal things in our packs? You have thermal blankets oh, yeah. in your packs, yes. Yeah. Oh, so we'll uh, cover Rachel up. Start warming her up. Charlie, are you there? I am now. Okay. Uh, so Rachel starts realizing that she's in a uh unmodest situation so she does cover up with the blankets that you provide um and she starts to uh warm up slightly so rachel you you mentioned that this you this wasn't a dream did it feel like a dreamlike state to you? Is that what's... Like... Is that what happened? I mean... It might have been more of a hope? I'm not sure. All I remember is... Oh, those people. I, uh... 
it wasn't me. I, I, did, I didn't do it intentionally. It wasn't my intention to do it. Yeah, well, we're pretty sure that that uh, whatever that altar does to people, it obviously changes not only your body, but your, your mind. mind. Yes, that's exactly what it does. So did you break, uh, did you break Elias out? How did he get out? Do you remember if you broke Elias out? I... I got him out, yes. That was actually me, and I feel terrible for doing it, but... I broke through for a second, and I knew that there was only one way out of this. Somebody else needed to touch it. He knew that he would be tempted. I mean, he already was. I thought maybe, though, he had seen the... Well, the error of his ways. He seemed to have been calmed down a bit. Well, once it, I don't know, I think that's... Once it picks somebody, it's kind of hard to um, be released. Resist? Well, we don't need to stay out here. Um, let's get you back. Let's yeah, let's get you back. Uh, also, do you think that we should take the altar with us, or do you know of a way we can destroy it so we can stop this from happening? We don't want anybody else to die. There's, I'm sorry, but with the way that this works, do you think it would tell me how to destroy it? No, I have no, no I idea. No, I just thought maybe, maybe you had some insights, but we're we're in the same boat. We don't know either, so. No, I have some insights, but they're not in regards to destruction of the altar. Well, we've got to figure something out because, yeah, that was horrific. What was done to those men. I know people who can get it to a place where it'll never be found again. Well, it draws people. We gotta find a place where nobody's gonna look at it. Right? That's that's what we're thinking. Because it draws people to it. Uh, the place my people have access to, even if it tries to draw people to it, they won't be able to get to it. All right, well, that's the least of our worries right now. First of all, we got to figure a way to uh, get Rachel back. Because... I'm sorry, but how I mean, are you going to do that with me looking like this? Well, that's you... exactly why I'm wanting to come up with a plan. I'm going to incite I mean, panic as soon as they see me. Well, that's kind of what I was thinking. We could sneak you back somewhere. Uh, currently, Jason is staying. He at was the at the mill. Would you like us to take you to the mill? Who is Jason? He's the guy that was the polar... Thing, the blue thing before you. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, there's somebody else that's gone through the same thing that you have. I don't think you're going to like what you see. Well, that's reassuring. Thank you. Well, I'm just trying to be realistic. And give you a heads up. I'm not trying to deceive you. So what is what is your thoughts? How how are you going to hide me? 
Well, that depends what your your thoughts are. I mean, we can cover you up in the back of the side by side so nobody sees you, and then once it's dark, sneak you into a house or whatever whatever you want. I mean, you can take me to this mill. That's fine. Um, the abandoned mill. I assume you're talking. Yep. Yes, I think that would probably be best considering the horror show in front of you. Now, I know this might be touchy, but it's like you want to get in touch with your sister. Your sister has been looking for you forever. I mean, I know you won't want her to see you like this, but not like this. No. Well, you are going to change back, but I don't know how long it takes and it's not going to be complete unless there's some way we can figure out a way to help it along kind of thing. Well, does Jason know of any ways? Uh, he doesn't seem to, but maybe between the two of you, you can talk it out. I don't know. Do, do you feel like he'd be of any use? Uh, maybe with you, because you've been through what he's been through. Uh, for us, he was kind of saying that, you know, uh, it's a lost cause kind of thing. Once again, that's very reassuring. No, oh, but seeing someone else that's going through the same thing, it's like... Yeah, two heads together might be. Well, and not only that, but now that we know about you both, uh, there might be things that we can do to help the situation, too. And maybe once the altar is away, farther away, maybe less pull. I don't know. Like, the thing is, it could things could change. We're not sure. Obviously, you know. Nobody's really done any research on this. It's true. All right, yeah, let's go to the mill. All right, pack everybody up and head towards the mill. What's our time at, like right now? Um. It's starting to get dark. Perfect. Um. Okay. So you wrap her up in a bunch of blankets and throw her on the back of the side by side. Yep. Okay. And you head back to the abandoned mill. So once we get to the yeah, once we get to the mill, then we all we'll take her in and try and get Jason's attention. Okay. So what are you doing to do that? So I'll go in. I'll take the lead. Go in. Okay. And and wa walk her into about the spot that we met Jason when he was watching us. Okay. And then I'll just call Jason. Jason, are you there? Uh, you hear movement somewhere coming from somewhere in the mill. Jason, I've got somebody I want you to meet. What is it that you want from me? Uh, basically, your help. How can I help you? What, what help can I provide? I gave you everything that I knew. Jason, I'd like you to meet Rachel. Who is Rachel? I, uh... Oh, I was going to use the word. 
I was the monster last, I guess. Oh. So there's another. There's just silence. I just thought maybe you two could uh, kind of console one another while we figure things out. And maybe you could uh, help her if we drop off some supplies and things for you guys. Do you think you'd be good for a little bit? I mean, if you want to, sure. That would be wonderful. Sorry, I didn't actually get any of your names. Here. Well, I'm Victor. This is Maxine. This is Frankie. This is Charlie. Thank you for not immediately attacking me. Um, and hopefully things work out Jason you don't have to come out but I'm gonna be staying here fine you can stay wherever you want just don't bother me all right Jason thank you thank you guys um I'll wait for your arrival. And we'll likely come back tomorrow, try and bring some supplies, some clothing, some blankets, food, of course, as much as we can bring. And then uh, uh, maybe some notebooks so you can keep track of what's going to happen. I, I don't know. You're a scientist, so you might want that. might make you feel... Yeah, I'm going to be like trying, yourself again. I'm going to be trying to figure some stuff out for sure. Um, thank you again. Uh, by the way, why you saw the lights from the side by side enter back into town from your rooftop perch. Yep. So I would know that's them heading back to the uh, uh, um, lodge mill lodge. Well, yeah, the mill and then they'll be coming back to the lodge. Okay. Then I will currently wait, stay watch still and wait for him, just in case. Okay. Um, okay, so you just chill. Are you guys just going to head back into town? Yeah, it's late, so we'll get back and make a plan for tomorrow. Okay. Get Wyatt in, in on it. When I see them pulling back into town, they're going to get a message on the radio. This is Guardian Angel. Your path is clear. <laughs> Thanks, Wyatt. Badoop. Yep. Badoop. All right. So you guys head back to the lodge. And then, uh, Wyatt, are you getting down off the roof or are you staying up there? Yeah. Hey, Emily, it looks like the guy, uh, the people are back, so we can go back inside now. All right, let's go down. After you? She climbs down the ladder. I will follow. Okay. So you guys head back inside. Um, mm -hmm. And then the, the group shows back up. So, uh, what'd you guys find? Well, you're not gonna believe this, Wyatt, but, uh, we, uh, found Rachel. Right, like I've been saying, it's Rachel. Uh, wow. yeah, except for that she's, uh, eight feet tall, blue, red eyes, a little bit different than what, uh, you'd, uh, you would think. 
That sounds a little crazy. Well, you might say that. Yeah. Also, the new, uh, the new, I will call it a monster, sure, is uh, Elias. And now crazy he's begun. Guy who whispers to the wind. Yep. And now he's begun the transformation. So what Rachel was, he is now becoming. So we got to oh. find a way to stop that. Okay. Yeah, and we tried to destroy the altar, and it did not end well. Frankie's got a dislocated shoulder. I put mine back in, but mine is out now, too. It was out. Did you uh, try lifting it up and dropping it? Yeah, that didn't go so well, either. Did you use a pulley? <laughs> nope. But uh, we kind of burnt down uh elias's cabin so really nothing to drop it off of a tree like you put it a rope around one end and you tie it up also p.s that's arson <laughs> yeah we'll uh we didn't burn it down on purpose uh, i, I don't can know contact has to be intentional i can contact my people to get rid of it Sounds like he's like the equalizer or yeah. <laughs> is a cleanup crew. I mean, I'm just saying, I'm pretty sure somebody said bad things happen when we commit crimes. <laughs> yeah, we get it. But sadly, that seems to be what we're surrounded. Who said bad things happen when you commit crimes? I thought that was the big speech we got about not committing crimes. Oh, no. Tom said you'd oh, be Tom, fired. Tom. Tom said you'd be fired. I don't know whether you consider that bad. Yeah, Wyatt might not consider it bad. Oh, well, yeah. It seemed negative when it was directed at me, okay? <laughs> Well, we got to figure out supplies and stuff that we can get for Rachel so that, well, she's trying to figure out how to turn herself back. So we want to see if we can help her out as much as we can. Plus, she's going to need some really big clothing. Yeah. Didn't y'all yeah. contact that scientist lady? Yeah, we haven't got an email back. We'll have to check that. Maybe Maxine could check her emails after. So have y'all yeah. tried taking a picture of her? We now are... that she's changed. No, we didn't think of that. Yeah. We're a little distracted. Well, don't you have the GoPros on you? Well, I guess. Would that have picked that up? I don't know what's what's affected by this thing anymore. Um, You'd have to I'd look. I'd have to check the footage. Okay, so I see you're going to do your, that. Give me your GoPros and I'll go check. That's a good idea. So you're doing that? All right. Yeah. Sure. I'll grab Emily and she can help me scan through the footage. Good old Emily. Okay. So it's taking pictures over and over and over and over again. Um, once you get to the fog, it's you can't really see anything. Um, and then once you get to the clearing, uh, you get a single picture, and then it's just it stopped working. Okay. So there's nothing after when they got back. Um. No. It. It errored out at that point. Okay. And then what about after we left the fog on the side by side? That's what I'm saying is as soon as you got to the clearing, that's when it errored out. It stopped working. <clears throat> it's done. Like, it well, it's working. not like it's not like you guys are checking it constantly. It's you set it and then just wear it for the day. So as soon as got that it. happened, as soon as the error happened, it stopped taking pictures. Oh, well, we can maybe get some pictures tomorrow and actually, uh, 
Rachel might encourage that because of her scientific mind. Yeah, true. Keeping track of stuff. Because, yes, at first she's a little bit worried about what people are going to think, but it's like, I feel like if even if I talked to her about her sister, I'm wondering whether she just sends a letter. That she's, you know, alive. We can figure out later. So was she going to give us a list of stuff that she would need, or we're just getting the stuff that... Well, we get the stuff we think that she'll need for yeah. now, and then she can give us a list Yeah. after. But yes, clothes are a big priority, something to cover herself up with. Yeah, good luck finding clothes for a seven-foot-tall person in, or in this town. Yeah. Is there anybody that, like, does mending? Is there a tailor in town? We don't need a tailor. As long as the clothes are big enough to go around her waist, yeah. she can wear flood pants. True. And a, and a altar top. What? What's it called when it's like... <laughs> Crop top. Crop top, there you go. Top. To be fair, I didn't know either. That's nice. Should be like the She-Hawk. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, are you do, you're going to do that tomorrow, I assume? Yeah, we're going to yeah, come up with a list tonight. Because nothing's open now, so we can No, nothing will be anyways. open. Uh, I mean, the bar's open, yeah. but that's it. No, 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 but nothing with that we can help her with. Yeah. Okay, so is there anything you're wanting to do right now? Could I contact my people? You can contact them, yep. Yeah. Well, I'm asking the group if what oh, they think. I thought you said can I, I, I thought you said can I contact my people? I don't know, Charlie. Do you want to wait till the scientist we figure out what the scientist wants to do, or do you want to just get rid of that thing? I'm thinking it might be best if we just get rid of it. Uh we also gotta deal with Elias. We got a little bit of stuff that's gotta take place in the next little bit here. I don't know if we need the altar to change him back. I don't know. You know what I mean? It seems the altar will only change him back if it changes someone else. Yeah. Like it needs a body. Hey guys, I checked the footage. There isn't really anything, unfortunately, so... I kind of wondered. All right, well, we're, we're hoping we can get some actual pictures tomorrow, Wyatt. So if you get the cameras all set up uh, again for tomorrow, then we'll get some footage for you that you can use. Okay, that sounds good. All right, so... <clears throat> Game plan for tomorrow, then? We get some food. We get some vaccine. Maybe get some clothing. Yeah, we'll see what we can find. Because it's like... Yeah. I'm sure we can... finagle up something with... Even with belts. I'll give yeah. it a day to see what the scientist wants to do and contact my people tomorrow. Saying the scientist is in Rachel? Yeah. No. 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 The other scientist. Yeah. Sorry. Name? Yeah. Oh, right. That person. It's been a I while. I want to email. So I'll give it a day to hear back from her and then contact my people. What no, day? That sounds good. It's the day after. Oh. For some reason, I have Monday in my head. I don't know why. Uh, it no, it's like it's either Friday or Saturday. You're yeah, talking no, is when our equipment comes in. Oh, the equipment you're, comes you're in. You're talking. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's Monday. Um, and then Doctor Helena Sinclair is the person you're thinking of. Helena, right? Okay. All right. So I guess we're just 
and not the bad. All right. Okay. So it's, it's just bedtime? Yes. Okay. Apparently. One second here. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay, one sec. So, as you guys are in bed. Uh oh. What? Can we just go to bed? What? Have a nice. I don't. I don't just understand. A nice yeah, okay. I can hear the smile in your voice. I don't even have to see your face. I'm not smiling. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Um, So, Charlie. Everybody else, no problem. You sleeping fine. But Charlie. <laughs> yes. Been away for a while. You start to get very cold. Which isn't very common for you. You're a pretty warm person. You sleep with blankets on. There's a heater in the room because it's winter. But it feels as though a window is open. And uh -oh. you glance over and your window is not open. Oh, no. <laughs> And you... uh, I go ahead. I I reach to turn on a light. Um, as you reach over to turn on the light, you pull the chain on the light. Um, and you see the filament in the bulb alter, like slightly change, so you know the light should be on. But nothing, no light comes from it. Hello, Elias. And you look around the room to see him. And you see two red eyes in the corner of your room. Is he doing anything? Nope. They are just staring at you. The eyes. Is he between me and the door? He is near the door. I get out of bed to see what he does. He has not moved. He is just staring you directly in your direction. I take a step towards him? No movement. I... I'm going to approach slowly and try to get to the door. <laughs> and you're just leaving? Uh, when I get to the door, still nothing? Nope. As you start to get closer, you get colder and colder, but still nothing. Okay. What are you doing here? There's no reply. D do you need help? Again, no reply. No reaction at all? He has just been staring at you the entire time. And I will remind... I, I know you don't know, but I'll remind the rest of the party. Um, this still looks like Elias. He's got the beard. He's got the hair. But everything is translucent. And you can see through his skin to his organs. He's not tall. The only difference now from when you saw him originally, earlier, 
I don't think I told you he had red eyes then, but he does now. Do I have any of his notes or anything still? Uh, Frankie had all those, so I don't think you would. Great. I'm gonna reach out and touch him. Okay. Um... You, where are you touching him? Just an arm. Okay. So you reach out, touch his arm. He, like, glances at your hand as you do it. And as you touch him, you can't see it, but you feel ice start to form up your hand as you touch him. Kind of like what happened last time with Rachel carrying me? Yes. Okay. I I don't know what you want. And he disappears. Nothing left behind or anything? Nope. Okay. I'm I just go and take some notes and go back to bed. 